I had a duck call. Where the hell are they? They were, they were right here a minute ago. Well, I can't find them. I must, maybe I put them on my desk. Oh, here. So John Carter, this guy I'm playing in Lucky Guy, he was kind of a nut. So he is constantly saying things like, look, I want the red meat. And I got into this thing early on in rehearsal where I don't know, one, at one moment I had a duck call in my pocket. I said, I want red meat. I just pulled it out and I did that. It had nothing to do with anything. It's a duck call. But everybody in the cast laughed at it because it was so off the wall. Well, George Wolfe didn't say a word. He laughed, he laughed, he was laughing, 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 didn't say a word. About three weeks later, I'm going, red meat. <laughs> Nobody's laughing because <laughs> it ain't funny anymore. George came up to me and he said, how emotionally married are you to that duck call? But the point that I'm trying to make is that a creative director lets you go with that kind of thing because you never quite know when the oddest thing is going to pay off. And I swear to God, no matter how long Lucky Guy has any kind of a life in the colleges or in repertory movements or whatever, no one's going to pull out a duck call. The director that I kind of grew up with, Adrian Hall, his name was, and he was the director of Trinity Rep in Providence, Rhode Island, and he always used to say, uh, we're in one room together. The audience is, is another character. And he always wanted to give the audience a point of view. In 1968, we were the first company, Trinity Rep was the first company to be invited to the Edinburgh Festival. And, and here we were, this little Rhode Island company coming to Britain, essentially, to do a play about Oscar Wilde, you know, so they poo pooed us. But we won best play that year. We, we never had an empty seat. It was pre pretty phenomenal. When we were there, Adrian saw a Grotowski play. The play was essentially about the Holocaust. And it was about halfway into the play before the audience realized that they, in fact, were the dead that the, that the play was talking about. And at the moment that they realized that they were the dead, there was this kind of gasp from the audience a kind of a collective understanding that they had a point of view in the play, that they had a position, and, a, and, a, and suddenly they had an attitude towards everything that was going on, and it became very visceral and very profound for them, you know. Uh, that's always amazed me, and then, and then when Adrian came back, when we, the whole company came back, he started incorporating that into all of our theater. Early on in the production of Lucky Guy, we have a, a, a convention that we established right from the very beginning. I mean, I'm uh, of, of speaking to the audience. And Tom comes on and he starts directly talking to uh, some Lucky Guy or girl out in the audience and they just get thrilled with it, you know, because he's talking directly to them. So they are given a point of view and, a, and, a, and, a, and they become involved uh, pretty quickly. I don't care if you're on the most incredibly designed set with buildings or trees or what, or if you're on an empty stage. The audience accepts what you tell them because they want to. They want to use their imagination. They want to be pushed into a place where they're using their imagination. Whether you're on in a black box or whether you're in a college production or whether you're on Broadway, if you allow yourself to use your imagination, you, you, you find little connections.